the she leader in a show. Uh, we are again uh, online uh, as uh, every time. Hopefully, uh, soon uh, we'll have a chance to meet uh, in person with majority of you. We are cooking something for February. Uh, but now, today, I am really privileged to uh, have as uh, guests of our She Leader format uh, two dear friends that are uh, uh, Angela and Gergana. Uh, and I'll say a few words, and I'm sure you will discover more during our discussion on who those young uh, uh, girls uh, are. They both are uh, co-founder of the Lamon uh, company. This is a young company, a startup that is uh, uh, has invented, in fact, and uh, put into production uh, biodegradable foil. And um, uh, I had a chance uh, to. Um, to follow uh, their growth in the last uh, two, three years, uh, really being very, very persistent into um, driving uh, behind their missions. They have lots of recognitions uh, uh, in the meantime, and uh, also recently a significant uh, funding that was coming from uh, EIC. Uh, those are all things that uh, we'll talk about during our uh, discussion with Angela and Gergana. But maybe, um, although, of course, uh, we people that know them uh, uh, see them more in a package, uh, both of them, uh, maybe a few words for every one of them uh, separately. Uh, Angela Ivanova uh, is uh, an entrepreneur with uh, over 10 years of experience in the uh, pre press and uh, print. Uh, she also uh, has been part of the EIT Manufacturing Forum as an expert, uh, and also last month uh, she won the uh, Women Innovators in Manufacturing of the EAT uh, RIS and uh, RIS stands from uh, Regional Innovations HIM uh, is part of Europe that EAT um, created as a special uh, target, uh, uh, target uh, region. Uh, apart from uh, that, Angela is a volunteer at the uh, Improve Foundation uh, that is working towards empowerment and uh, independence for domestic violence uh, survivors. It's also a jamba uh, that connects people with diverse abilities in Bulgaria and their uh, future employers. Uh, Gergana is... Uh, the other co-founder of Lamont. As a background, she is illustrator and graphic designer and has also more than 10 years of experience uh, in the field of preprint uh, production. Um, maybe that's why with, uh, uh, with Angela, they've uh, created uh, this uh, breakthrough innovative solution. We seem to have some connection issues. <laughs> Should we make the way to join in? Yeah, maybe I can tell a few words about myself in the meantime. Because <laughs> I know them anyway. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just get us <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yes, uh, I do have a background in print. That's exactly how uh, Angela and I came to be uh, involved uh, in this endeavor of creating a biodegradable laminating film in the first place. Uh, I've also been mentoring for Panda Labs and Junior Achievement Bulgaria, which are great uh, companies uh, devoted to teaching uh, the next generation of uh, green entrepreneurs. Um, and yeah, that's that's the, the main thing about me. Also, uh, animal and nature lover and trying to volunteer uh, wherever I can. This is another thing that's kind of the same uh, when it comes to Angie and me. Another, yet another connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, 
if the connection of Sasha though will be <laughs> will be uh, will stay the same, maybe Irina should point us a little more on the direction of the conversation or Okay, so that's uh, that's the risk of uh, real life uh, <laughs> uh, event from home, or of course. Uh, uh, we take uh, measures of distance uh, these days, yeah. uh, but um, I didn't uh, follow the improv Gergana, but I'm sure she mentioned uh, some of the key events. And uh, that's why with no further delay and uh, intros and speeches from my side, I want to ask you both, uh, why did you decide it, uh, to uh found Lamon and what is the mission of your business can you share with uh, with us yeah Kirigana is uh, the the introduc introductory person of our company usually so I will let you start thank you yeah I'm the I'm usually the presenter uh so mm -hmm. The the whole thing started because we were actually looking for uh, a laminating film that would answer our sustainability goals. And as Sasha mentioned, we both worked in print, so of course we were using laminating films all the time. Um, for those who have not heard me say that a few thousand times, lamination is the through layer of plastic that is applied to paper and cardboard. Uh, it's used to seal and preserve the, the paper and cardboard and the print uh, underneath. Uh, offers uh, various optical effects and, of course, uh, more elasticity and durability to the, the whole product. It's used in packaging, uh, advertising materials, publishing as well, absolutely everywhere around us. Unfortunately, now it's not being recycled because plastic and paper combined together means mixed media that just goes straight into landfills or incinerators. So we were very aware of that issue um, and everybody in the print sector and packaging sector Kind of is. Um, unfortunately, there were no products on the market that was were suitable for mass use and for the standard machines, and that were well, no products like that at all, really. <laughs> um, and our research into how can we substitute uh, those laminating films or what can we do about it naturally evolved into finding uh, our third uh, team member, Associate Professor Filip Publikov, who is a biopolymer expert with, again, 12, 13 years of experience in the field. Um, then developing kind of a business plan, trying different recipes, and after three years of R&D, we now have a product. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, R&D and uh, uh, also uh, Lamont product uh, is a bridge between the market needs and science. Um, and this one of the examples for this meetup. Uh, do you believe that uh, there is a good enough infrastructure for development of uh, science based enterprises in Bulgaria? And what is needed to stimulate that important uh, collaboration? Well, if I can join here. Uh... Yes, there is a certain um, stoppers, if I may say like this, uh, regarding maybe the, the science and the business gap that there is already well established. Uh, what might be needed is more and more um, help from the government as well regarding this, filling this gap between science uh, uh, um, industries um, and the business itself. So um, pretty much Yes, there is field for establishment. Uh, like we see, there are more and more companies that are in the engineering field here in Bulgaria. And, I, and we all see them in, for the past, like, let's say three years, there are uh, quite a lot of startups coming in and building um, their own companies based on uh, research. And uh, we can say quite a few examples already, but I can see that there is a gap, but it's starting to be filled by by the needs and by the, the let's say the younger generation that is uh, seeing the need for uh yeah more and more innovations regarding manufacturing let's say and engineering in in some innovative specifics 
Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Angie. That's an uh, important positive trend because uh, honestly, the statistics are not uh, uh, very encouraging about uh, the situation, uh, not specifically in Bulgaria, but uh, there is a gap between the countries from the old Europe and uh, new Europe. And um, uh, in, that, in uh, that context, is uh, maybe worth to mention that uh, recently you've been awarded a prestigious uh, uh, grant uh, award from the EIC Accelerator. Uh, and this is really a competitive bidding throughout whole Europe, uh, where the best of the best companies, uh, the future majority of them science based. Uh, um, tech companies uh, are competing for public funding and uh, you've been awarded a, a significant grant. Can you tell for our uh, friends that are with us and who listen uh, uh, the, the, the podcast uh, later on, uh, why you've been selected? And maybe to give also a few tips on uh, uh, those that may apply uh, also um, in the future, that's a very uh, good instrument. But uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, Lamon as a solution, about PACON, about what you are doing, because that's where the magic is. Of course. Uh, well, first, we need to mention that this is our third uh, year trying uh, to get funded by the EIC. So it definitely didn't happen uh, overnight. Um, one of the, the main things I think that uh, worked in our favor is the fact that we uh, know our target markets very well uh, because throughout this R&D period we were actively talking with our end clients which are print houses, packaging houses, different brands who are interested in uh, sustainable packaging or printing or anything like that. So we've been gathering information and we've been uh, kind of molding our products uh, based on our customers' feedback. So. We already have a very good connection and established conversations with uh, with potential clients, which I think always matters when you talk to, to investors or in this case, uh, DIC, because in a sense, they are uh, a type of investors. Um, the other thing is uh, that we used this time to build up a portfolio and then to create a strong vision about the next products that we want to create for the next five to 10 years uh, even. So being really ambitious uh, with our goals and uh, what we want to do, I think helped. Um, and yeah, Angie can uh, tell a bit more about our products. Yeah, I should add about this, that uh, the European legislations uh, regarding the single use plastics and things like the, the plastic uh, like a whole helped us quite a lot. And let's not forget that we are both women uh, leaders, uh, both the co-founders of a plastic fighting solution. So that was really working in our favor, I have to admit. Uh, as for our product, uh, yeah, we, we already established uh, the laminating foil that is, that we be, is currently being tested. Um, we will start testing even for, uh, with pilot customers for uh, in the past, uh, in the uh, year ahead. Uh, we are working uh, with uh, great professionals actually in the field of uh, printing and laminating, I mean, uh, and they are giving us feedback the entire time regarding what properties we should change. So uh, what Gergana said about our network of uh, future clients, it's super important to have a great connection and to, yeah, just to be able to communicate with them and to receive their feedback. <laughs> Good. Uh, we are super happy to say that we already uh, filed uh, our patent. We are, of course, waiting because there is a certain uh, time of uh, just, uh, yeah, that we should regarding the uh, IPO, uh, the IP, sorry. Uh, we've been already uh, certified uh, for the highest uh, possible mark of bio-based material. We are also currently waiting for um, our certificate for industrial and foam compost. This will come. I have to uh, gladly say that we've tested already here in a Hong Kong post uh, uh, with a good friend of ours here in Tsnyazhevo. They have a neighbor compost, so we've tested there our product and it completely disappeared for a month and a half. Uh, these are uh, all the things that are actually 
moving us forward and uh, giving us the, the, the hope for the past three years that, that this is worth it. And um, yeah, we should just push it further uh, to develop the best product possible. I think this really so what this entire application. So what would be the advice, uh, the advice to those that are in the first year, not in the third year as yourself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Uh, and then also, uh, based on the, that set feedback, we got a lot of requests for packaging uh, film as well. That's how PACON, our packaging file, was uh, developed. It was just requested by people, so it wasn't really a choice. And because we already had the, the base recipe of the foil, without the glue, it kind of could work uh, as a packaging film. And then just we just started developing it more and more, changing a few things in order to make it suitable for that industry. Um, again, based on feedback uh, from food producers, we developed an oxygen barrier property that would allow us to package food and preserve it well. And again, based on uh, based on the requests from customers, uh, we developed another packaging file. That's our back on option, we call it. Uh, that's our newest product. Um, that is uh, marine biodegradable, which means it uh, completely dissolves in uh, soaked uh, cold water, which, as we know, is a huge issue when it comes to ocean pollution. And so, yeah, we. I think the that the main advice is just to to always listen to what your clients are, what your clients' needs are, and try to to answer them as best you can. And protect your IP. Sure. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> if I summarize also the Angela's uh, uh, comment from before. Yeah, I wish you uh, really lots of success because uh, obviously you reached out a level that uh, eventually makes the business already stable and uh, irreversible uh, ahead. Uh, and now I want to uh, go in a little bit different direction uh, to a few intro. Uh, I know you bought from quite some time. And besides building from scratch Lamont, uh, you both are involved in many different uh, impactful initiatives. Uh, those that I know uh, are that both of you are green activists, both of you are activists for women's rights, you are lecturing in school, uh, you are mentoring um, uh, of uh, green uh, startups. Uh, so Tell us more about uh, those involvements and uh, what drives you uh, to do more than uh, what is your main focus and uh, requesting anyway uh, lots of energy uh, as you are building company from uh, from zero. Uh, so Angela, you are first. Well, yeah, if I should start, uh, yeah. Um... What's driving us is, uh, yeah, our uh, overall incentive of uh, what's wrong <laughs> and how much we would like to change what's wrong and all of these things that are aren't happening in the best ethical and moral way are really bugging us both. Uh, you know, uh, well, uh, the conditions uh, that were created from the pandemic and everything have led to the uh, really. Um, alarming spike of, of violence. Uh, this is regarding improved foundation. So uh, I have to say that uh, this is really been pushing me. Well, not only because of the pandemic and everything, the, the entire domestic and other and public also violence uh, towards girls and women have been uh, on a rise for the for the past ten years. I have to say, and it's super disturbing. So whether occurring in in public or private lives. Uh, this is really halting um, women or people actually to have uh, equal participation in the society. So this is one of the reasons that I'm really uh, happily uh, helping improve doing whatever I can uh, because the foundation is focused on the economic um, empowerment of women and girls and uh, it highlights what is missing in our um, policies and overall uh, legislations uh, and how things should be maybe better done to enhance uh, gender equality. So what they do and how they do it and how they present it in, in the public is uh, the right, the best possible way, I think, for my opinion, that uh, this should be done because uh, there is some 
social um, justification of uh, or acceptance of violence that we're not talking about that much. So this is something that Improve is really focusing on. Um, from on that part and on the other part is Jamba, uh, who are working so much on, on the human rights, um, especially regarding people with, like with diverse abilities, like you've mentioned. And uh, you know, we all know that they are denied the rights uh, to, or that they are entitled to. Uh, we all know that, unfortunately, of course, in Bulgaria, I should, I, we all we should have to say that they are super. Um, Neglected, unfortunately, again, and Jamba plays a super special role regarding their um, their help towards uh, uh, bringing them back into a society uh, and maybe ch ch challenging a little more the public and the private sector to adapt their professional training or their professional options and work uh, ethics towards people with diverse abilities. So all of these things. And like Gary said earlier, uh, it's the same with animal rights. It's the same with human rights. And because we are just being um, pulled by our own ethical vision of everything, uh, this is why we actually find uh, energy super easy to work and volunteer wherever we can, because that's just not correct. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Angie. Maybe uh, Gary will also uh, share a few of your super uh, energies. Uh, I know that you are involved in uh, helping young people in different uh, ways. Uh, in some cases, both of you. But uh, just to extend a little bit the picture of uh, you both and uh, the understanding on who you are beyond your professional engagement with Lamont. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, my main things I think currently are uh, mentoring uh, gigs, <laughs> let's call them. Um, and the only reason is because we got a lot of uh, help during the last three years from really from strangers mostly uh, or from different programs or accelerator programs, boot camps and all of that. Uh, people just giving us their experience and their knowledge and advice for free and just because they want to see other people achieve their goals and just make whatever their uh, business is successful. Uh, and that was really expiring from, from the start. I, of course, I've always been a people's person, so I really enjoy talking to people and, uh, you know, sharing ideas and whatnot. So the option to, to share our experience and what we've learned so far, and even if we can make you know, the roads in front of the next people after us easier and, you know, faster. That's always, always a great opportunity. So, yeah, that's, I think that's the normal thing to do. If somebody asks you for advice, you say yes. <laughs> uh, that's very admirable. And uh, I uh, uh, believe it's not uh, too big set, but I believe that uh, now grows a new generation of uh, people uh, with their 20s and 30s, people like you, uh, and um, they live with, uh, with a mission. They live with uh, this give-get culture, and I see many uh, good examples. Uh, you are among, among them. Uh, do you share this opinion uh, and um, what drives this new consciousness, uh, not only for you, but for the uh, people around you, for this generation of change makers, of uh, uh, good uh, collaborators, uh, people that uh, uh, take but also give back? Honestly, I believe every every time has its missions uh, for our generations and I think the, the ones after us, it's going to be kind of establishing better social environment for everybody and of course trying to protect and reverse the damage we've already done to, to our planet because now we are more than ever really aware of how much we've messed up and how far things are. Um, so I think because everybody has uh, that has you know a lot of problems again, but 
he has really easy access to to knowledge and to information and to science and to the science facts. I think it's uh, it drives especially young people towards being really active uh, and really trying to to do whatever their part is uh, in order to to fight climate change, to fight social injustice, to fight animal cruelty, whatever you are passionate about, or if you're passionate for everything, then it's like us, it's fighting everything. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, and this really ac easy access to to knowledge and to information, I think, uh, makes people move. And again, with social media and everything, we are more and more uh, connected, which of course makes helping each other a bit easier. Uh, actually, I also um, believe and see more and more examples uh, in that area, as I said, as you confirmed, and um, everybody knows it uh, already. We live in time of fundamental uh, change and uh, the world, in my view, goes uh, uh, more and more uh, in a um, uh, new setup, new formula uh, and philosophy of collaboration and co-creation. Uh, still, the trendsetter of this uh, life uh, concepts uh, are perceived as the different. Um, the systems that are ruling uh, our world uh, are designed for a uh, different uh, setup. How, in your view, we can fasten this process that uh, um, those people that are the trendsetters, the new guys uh, to uh, to uh, become the mainstream ones? Uh, do you have an opinion on this? How we can um, make it uh, uh, acceptable uh, for more and also possibly we to reach the tipping point that is uh, uh, will allow changing the systems. My short answer will be by example, <laughs> uh, because at the end of the day, well, that's, that's the main thing that changes the, the society's opinion by seeing that something is actually doable. Uh, it makes it more easy for, for them to maybe believe that it is doable. So when one people, one person becomes uh, a group of people and then it, they become a mass of <laughs> a lot of people, the change is inevitable now. So we do have great responsibility uh, and there are more and more social um, platforms and NGOs that are there to <laughs> awaken the society. So it is again the example. I also believe it's uh, it's the the being successful part. Uh, if you make a green business really successful while keeping it really ethical and really sustainable, I think that type of example moves the economy forward, and then that changes kind of the legislations, laws, government government changes again. The change goes back to to the community. So I think that's also because we we do live in a capitalistic uh, environment that's inevitable really at this point. So I believe making making smart business decisions, if you're trying to, to make a change also moves things faster. So the new capitalism uh, will look like your, uh, yourself, <laughs> like you bought in a way, yes. Why not? <laughs> Sustainable, <laughs> conscious, uh, purpose-driven, uh, uh, science-based, uh, and uh, uh, really addressing the uh, challenges uh, that are fundamental um, related to climate uh, climate change. Yeah, socially yeah. responsible and responsible. Yes. So. Uh, uh, still, because we are in a feminine ground, although uh, this is not a feministic uh, area, meaning uh, BCWT and uh, uh, she leader, but uh, I want to uh, maybe talk a little bit more about uh, um, 
what is the space for women uh, in business? Is it uh, reserved? Is it enough? And uh, how you would comment the fact that, uh, in fact, uh, we have only 15% uh, of the new businesses in Europe are led by women at the moment. That's the reality. What happens to the rest? Uh, recently, uh, we were following the data uh, still in Europe and in Bulgaria specifically, women are a bit more than men, 52% women, 48% men. But in the business, uh, it's a different statistics. Uh, what is your view? Why, uh, um, why less women uh, decide to go in that area like yourself? At my uh, opinion is that it's just because this is how we are raised and that's how we are taught. Thankfully, this is changing, but women in general are taught to be the caretakers and uh, the ones who should be stable, not take too many risks. And as we know, business is oftentimes about taking big risks and, and working a lot and not really doing anything else but work. <laughs> so <laughs> your social life kind of suffers. Um, so I, I do believe that's uh, the biggest reason is how we are brought up uh, as gender. I do believe also that this is slowly uh, but surely changing and now young girls are taught about entrepreneurship and about uh, having real passion uh, and following that passion into work. Um, and not just focusing on uh, being the, the caretakers and the family oriented uh, part of the population. So I think this is changing, but it's going to take time. And of course, then the generation that is currently on the, the higher positions uh, needs to recognize the, the talent and the drive in, in women as well uh, as they're trying to, to enter the workforce. Yeah, good point, because it's the same as in, uh, like, like, let's say family, you have to have the balance. So it's in the same in a company, you have to have the diversity in order to have different approaches towards uh, same problem issues or different developments like a, a whole the, in the, um, yeah, with the employees or with a certain problem, just to have different points of view on how to uh, interact or, uh, yeah, how to tackle some issues. So it is, we are, yeah, we are slowly but surely trying to split responsibilities, not only in families, but in companies as well. This is one of the reasons that there are more and more women in manufacturing as well. Uh, these are important roles and um, yeah, things are going in a, in a good direction. The point is, uh, uh, yeah, they should just a little more faster, I think <laughs> might be better, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what you've mentioned is uh, obviously uh, the new type of communication that allows this information to reach out to more people. Obviously, the role models, we are on such an event, you are role models, maybe I'm role model also. Definitely. Uh, and uh, that uh, stimulates and encourage uh, uh, more women to um, make a step if they want. Uh, and uh, may encourage also boys to make a step and I'm not here and uh, we should not maybe uh, split this uh, into uh, men and women. Uh, just uh, uh, for me that dialogue is important uh, way to put things into a right context that everybody should uh, have the freedom and to allow himself or herself to follow the, the, their dreams, to follow uh, their talents and to uh, not to see the limitations. And uh, Gergana mentioned that there is still an inertia on uh, how we have been grown and uh, the accepted uh, traditional social roles of uh, uh, women um, and men. Uh, still, I believe that um, a lot is uh, um, rather self barriers that majority of the women put as a limitation. I need to um, have a lighter job in accordance to be more at home with the children, with the family, uh, or uh, my husband should be leading the uh, 
uh, in the family to have a stable, uh, stable um, family situation, and there's a presence of no matter that sometimes they may have more talent and uh, um, ability to to do successful business. What else uh, you can give us your observation and, and as an advice to those women that um, didn't make a step or are hesitating? Uh, based on your experience, uh, you both are uh, good examples of uh, people that uh, took a risk. Well, I guess if you just want something, you have to believe in yourself at the first and surround yourself with uh, of the right people this i know that this is a cliche but that's not uh, strange to believe uh, surrounding yourself and uh, looking uh, up to people that you would like to maybe see in your life uh, eventually are you are slowly but surely becoming the, the that so yeah surround yourself with the best people possible that you would like to have in your life and believe in your dreams whatever they are so, um, because we have heard quite a few no's that we've already, we've been talking about it a, a lot. So, uh, this, this, this didn't uh, discourage us, uh, not at all, but we were together. So we were just helping each other balancing this, uh, and being more and more stubborn while we are together. If, if it was only me, that probably we wouldn't be here at all. So it's really important to have a partner in good, like we say, not in crime. Yeah, definitely. It's the same for me. Uh, and also, the other thing is uh, failing doesn't hurt <laughs> that much. It's not nice. It's definitely not uh, the desirable outcome. But, you know, risking is not the end of everything. I mean, you can risk, you can fail miserably, and then you move on. <laughs> I mean, and that's the that was the hardest question, because we did fail a lot of times, especially in the beginning. It was mostly failing, and then little tiny wins here and there, but then continue to fail, <laughs> especially when when we were in that R&D period and we were testing different recipes. It was a uh, quite a quite a hard road. So, yeah, the, just accepting that you will. Fail inevitably and to, to be ready to get up after that. And as Angie said, have a partner to pick you up when you're down, which again sounds like a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. <laughs> Uh, we meet you today at the moment where uh, uh, you are successful. Uh, but um, obviously, um, as you mentioned, Gergana, uh, this uh, was not uh, secured. Uh, if you register a company, and this is not a ticket that uh, you make a multi million dollar business. And uh, what are the sacrifices that um, one uh, should uh, know about uh, starting uh, uh, own business um, in the context also of uh, your last comment, uh, Nirgana? Mm -hmm. What well, you uh, compromise <laughs> with, of course, both of you in accordance to reach out that point? Yeah, well, uh, it's a lot of stress uh, and there is no security at all. So for the first uh, few years, we worked uh, primarily on Lemon and then we would both continue freelancing uh, during nighttime or on the weekends uh, in order to make ends meet. So just be ready to be broke and overworked and uh, quite miserable for all. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, sacrificing a little of your social life, let's say, even though we didn't, uh, for some uh, weird, for some reason, and the reason, one of the reasons was that our social life became uh, our work. We, we, at some point, we just got into this bubble of entrepreneurs, uh, like in the uh, change makers of Bulgaria, like in other um, organizations that at some point you are actually working while being social. And I, that that's again, actually uh, like this, what you should surround yourself with, uh, because uh, while networking and being in such events, you're constantly just uh, giving yourself uh, or listening to some advices that you will later on implement on, in your um business or life even so but yeah there are compromises but uh it's mostly sleep 
Yeah, it's uh, always about the choices that you make in life. Not necessarily you should follow a certain template um, yeah. on because you are 27, you should uh, live in specific way. But uh, um, I'm uh, uh, looking in the uh, in the. Um, uh, in the time uh, we normally have it half an hour this discussion we are close to uh, 40 minutes um let me see if uh, there is a uh, uh, question uh, from people that are listening uh, to us uh, we don't have at the moment questions in the chat and uh, do you want to uh, have a concluding, um, uh, let's say, uh, sentence or uh, to respond to the most important uh, last question that we are asking our guests uh, uh, all the time. Uh, how you hack yourself? How you recover after intensive day or um, uh, really going into uh, um, let's say, stuck uh, mind? Well, I have my dogs, so I, I just love just some me time. But at the end of the day, if I have to say, I am hacking myself by being surrounded with with uh, positive people. So um, this is this is my way. This is all the time just lifting me up and uh, showing me that not, yeah. We are all hackable. <laughs> Whatever happens uh, is not the last thing that will happen. Super. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is kind of the same again. Uh, first the dog and a bit of me time. And then we usually, after working all day together, we end up going out together and meeting our friends and just enjoying uh, a nice evening of just completely different conversations. We're not talking about uh, print or packaging or laminating films or biodegradable polymers. <laughs> yeah. <like> that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. And yeah, the, I think the hardest thing is to to try and to start something, and then once you've kind of the the ball starts rolling, it it does become easier. And it, now it's we've learned a little bit more how to manage the workload, how to manage uh, our different roles uh, in the company, and then how to how to be even more ambitious and how to dream even bigger and just attack every problem with less stress and self-doubt so. uh, and uh, there is one uh, question in the chat uh, from uh, uh, Jane Dimitrova uh, can you recommend uh, some accelerator programs uh, or VCs uh, who are useful and are focused on women founders hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Regarding VC, well, we're not. I'm not that sure because we everything that we've been participating in was super mixed. So um, I'm, I'm not super sure if I, if there are some, especially towards women. Uh, they are like being a woman nowadays is an incentive <laughs> uh, as a founder or something like this. So I'm guessing that, that everybody is uh, funding everybody. So it's not super strict. But I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest uh, the EIC uh, a kind of package of uh, various programs. There is the Climate Launchpad, which is a competition, which is uh, has a few boot camps uh, in the process, which were great. This is how we actually started. Uh, climate uh, Kick Accelerator program. It's different stages, and again, it's uh, there are uh, small tickets of uh, grant funding, and of course. Uh, very that thing very beneficial accelerator program with great mentors in the meantime uh the chivas venture competition uh is again it's a competition but again because we participated in that we had access to world class mentors and business professionals which were which was great uh but yeah whatever the thing with us is we've participated in quite a few programs and uh, challenges and then the amount that we've actually applied for is probably a hundred times more <laughs> than we managed to get in. So just whatever can kind of fit you, I would suggest to to apply, because 
wherever you get in, it's uh, free mentorship. It's uh, free access to to various tools, business tools, financial tools, and so on. Um, and it's it's never a waste of time. It turns out. Yeah, but this is the EIT, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, not the EIC. Uh, just, Sorry. just, yeah, to, yeah. just, to clear. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's not specifically towards women again, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, really it doesn't. Just apply to everything, and yeah, yeah. If it's climate related or sustainability related, they are focusing on the, the product itself and not on uh, who is uh, behind it. Most of the time, and so. uh, because also EAC was mentioned to clarify it at the end of our discussion, uh, EAC also uh, has a couple of programs. Uh, Jane, if you are interested, uh, they have a program for uh, really very, very early stage uh, uh, and even an idea for the company uh, that is uh, supported uh, to end the company to mm -hmm. be structured as a uh, um, company uh, and also to put together a business plan in support of uh, with support of uh, mentors. Then uh, you have also a second um, pillar that uh, helps in uh, multi-country collaboration to have an access also to research lab. And the third one, most advanced one, is the financing instruments for uh, scale-up companies like uh, Lamon, uh, which uh, also uh, is uh, checking the uh, viability of the business um, product and uh, gives both uh, um, significant grant instrument um, and also, uh, also equity potentially. So, uh, there is enough information about this. We'll be happy to extend it if uh, you have specific one. Uh, there are a couple of VCs, uh, not in Bulgaria, but on European level that are working for, for women only. Uh, honestly, I would not recommend uh, this, being myself an investor and also a European couple of funds, because uh, for me, that's a bit of artificial uh, split and uh, I don't see a reason for a good business idea to be uh, seated and uh, grown uh, in an artificial then market competitive environment and for the funding uh, the this environment are normal investment instruments with uh, equal criteria for men and women because market uh, tomorrow um, it's not asking you if you're female founder or uh, male founder, they ask you if you have a good product and that's why they pay you money. So then go uh, there. So I've took more than you. This was not uh, very good, but Jane is also talking to us in the chat. Thanks a lot. Very useful. Good luck. Uh, we'll try everything with uh, Foodobox. Uh, we know for the box and uh, we'll be happy to discuss. I'm pretty sure that also Angela again and Gergana would be uh, happy to uh, spend half an hour with you in case uh, you find it uh, useful. Uh, sure. Yeah, to, to give a specific feedback. Okay, uh, dear ladies, uh, I think we are a little bit above the time that we normally reserve for uh, for the event. Um, it never is enough and uh, because, of course, we are always uh, inviting such an interesting uh, uh, guests as yourself. Uh, maybe uh, one final sentence uh, from uh, uh, each one of you uh, to our audience, uh, which is uh, business women audience predominantly from Europe. Yeah, I can start. Mine, so or, I'll just leave Andy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, if I have been motivating, um, everything is just starting. So, uh, yeah, let's look up for it and see and do our best to to be our best yeah super yeah.
<laughs> also, there is never too late to start a new business and a whole new path, a career path is, you know, you can be in your fifties and, you know, have, you know, had your kids grown them, go for the business route now. So that's, that's my thing. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> that's nice. Super. Thank you very much uh, for the encouragement at the end, for the uh, good, lively discussion that you had, and uh, primarily for being yourself, uh, both of you, great uh, encouragement and example uh, for uh, female business uh, leaders and people that are very persistent uh, on what they um, are following as a, as a dream. So thank you very much uh, for being uh, tonight with us and uh, looking forward to meet you soon in person. Yes. And thank you so much for, for giving people like us this, this platform and, you know, letting us see other people who are very inspiring as well. So thank you so much to the leader. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye.